Welcome to the Maxta Classroom. For today, we're going to, going to actually be focusing on the VM creation process since uh, this is where our application optimization policies reside. Uh, it should be noted here that uh, if you wanted to do all of this work directly from within vCenter, your, your single pane of glass, we do have a plugin that integrates into vCenter. Um, so you can do it there, or you can come into the MX Insights window here, which is the Maxta management interface, and do all of all the all of the work from here. Uh, we do write to the vCenter APIs, so you know all these different fields uh, should look very familiar to vCenter admins. So we're going to give this VM a name, and uh, you can select a data center if you've got multiple data centers. Um, you can select your operating system of choice. And you can select your typical things like sockets and cores and, and virtual memory. Uh, this next screen, we're actually going to uh, select a host to deploy this virtual machine on initially. And uh, this next window, we can actually assign an ISO file. So for if we're uh, if we have an ISO of a Windows image, for example, we can uh, deploy that from that. Um, we can assign our virtual networking. And this page is where we start to get into our application optimization uh, portion. This is kind of the differentiator for Maxta. Um, so we can do this on a per virtual machine basis. Uh, if you had 100 virtual machines, they could each have their own different policy based on the needs of the actual application. Um, so a great deal of flexibility around this. And so some of the fields, uh, number of replicas, so this deals with how protected you want your data to be for a given virtual machine, uh, whether, whether you want two copies or three copies uh, spread across that cluster um, in the event of a failure. You know, how, how tolerant do you want that virtual machine to be um, based on the policy that, that you want to actually um, configure? Uh, we also have the ability to set a rebuild priority, and the rebuild priority is really around failure scenarios. So um, I can assign a specific uh, priority to a virtual machine, and um, it really deals with how quickly after I lose a host, for example, do I want each of my virtual machines to start remirroring those second copies of data and get it fully protected again. Uh, so, you know, if it's a 10, it's going to rebuild right much quicker than a virtual machine that's at a 5 or a 2 or something. Um, and we basically put everything into a queue and select uh, the highest priority to rebuild first and uh, lower priority ones after that. Um, metro clustering uh, refers to our ability to essentially create you know stretch clusters so this could be um, nodes in different racks inside of a data center or different buildings across a, a campus or even uh, data centers across a metropolitan area uh, we are doing synchronous replication so typically we're going to re recommend or require uh, five milliseconds round trip time or, or less but basically this will guarantee that that secondary copy of each piece of data will be written to another uh, section of of this virtual infrastructure so if you were to suffer uh, an outage in a rack or in a building on a campus um, that second copy of the data would still be over in that uh, secondary site that you've allocated whether it's another rack inside your data center or a building on a campus for example uh, striping has to do with how we lay the data down across the cluster. So by default, we're going to use what's called horizontal striping. And this really, uh, we'll send um, the data that gets written down across as many nodes in the cluster as possible to take advantage of all the concurrency that we can get from a, uh, all the solid states and spinning disks across those nodes. If we unmark this box, this goes to what we call vertical striping. And uh, this really gives you what's typically known as, as data locality. So uh, the primary copy of that virtual machine's data will be residing directly on the host that the virtual machine is running on. And then we send a secondary copy uh, to other hosts in the cluster. Um, again, giving you uh, quite a bit of flexibility in, in what your actual applications require, whether they require that data to be right next to the virtual machine or whether they can take advantage of all the the uh, parallel writing that we can do across the rest of the cluster. So under advanced settings, um, this is the node affinity and service providers typically use something like vCloud Director to uh, essentially fence in uh, virtual machines from uh, different uh, tenants. Well, we can do the same thing uh, from the storage placement perspective. So if we enable this, this functionality uh, with a checkbox uh, that 
en enables another option on here so I can go in and actually specify the hosts that um, this virtual machines data can actually be striped across so I can essentially fence fence that uh, virtual machines data across some subset of hosts uh, which is helpful for service providers particularly this next window um, is the VDisk creation. So again, we can assign multiple VDisks to this virtual machine, all fairly standard things uh, from a VMware perspective. Uh, but there's some key differences on here, uh, things that we actually add in as part of our application optimization. So we can specify a VDisk size, and then we can actually specify a page size. So depending on the application that you're actually running, so very, maybe uh, VDI, um, does just fine with a 4k page size but you're also running uh, exchange or SQL which benefits from a larger block size underneath uh, 32k or 64k we can align the actual page size with um, that black block allocation size that you have formatted on the disk uh, which enables uh, applications to write more seamlessly uh, down to their underlying base disks and select our controller and then we can also select um, to enable or disable read cache on a per VDisk basis uh, as well as compression so you know you may choose to disable read cache uh, if it's a SQL log file it's never going to read stuff back it's just doing sequential writing um, likewise you might choose to disable compression for a workload that uh, um, doesn't compress well and we do inline compression so um, this is always in line so we don't need a staging area to be able to to write this stuff down uh, we can assign these policies on a per VDisk basis so again you know if it's a SQL environment and we're doing multiple VDisks for different uh, portions of that SQL server I can specify different settings for read cache and compression and page sizes we'll submit this and um, this will take us to our um, our manage virtual machines window and you'll see at the bottom we're actually running the process of creating this virtual machine basically it's uh, getting that feedback from from vCenter uh, this should finish up in just a second uh, we've completed so this virtual machine is created uh, and now I just want to show that um, even if we had created this inside vCenter for example we can still come in to this window and actually modify some of our protection policies or our rebuilds um, or the way we stripe our data Likewise, we can go into the actual VDisk itself and, and enable or disable some of these different, uh, different additional features. So that concludes our demo for today. Thanks for watching this video. And be sure to check out our other videos to learn more about how to use MX Insight.